So I think it's helpful for everyone who's watching this right now to know how the energy system of the body connects into what uh, has, is generally framed as the body-mind connection. So one of the things I like to talk about for most folks, especially in the uh, rest of the mental health world, is they are used to, they're used to metaphors of the brain and neuroscience. And it's important for them to understand how energy psychology fits in. And I think nowadays we have a very good way of, of understanding that. And the way I tend to do that, Michael, is, uh, is borrowing heavily from Dan Siegel's interpersonal neurobiology. I actually remember the day I saw, for the first time I kind of heard him speak, and uh, Dan has this very interesting thing. He, he goes around the world and he talks about how he's interviewed a hundred, hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of psychiatrists and psychologists who do psychotherapy, which is therapy of the psyche. And then he says, okay, well, the psyche means mind. And he says, well, what's your definition of mind? And right. basically 97% of people said, we, we, we don't know. So what happened is Dan got together a series of, of psychologists and neuroscientists and social and sociologists and anthropologists, mm -hmm. and they all got together and through a me method called consilience, which is basically finding everything that you agree upon, they created a working definition of the mind. And the basic part of this working definition of the mind is as follows. That, first of all, the mind is something that arises out of this thing called the body-mind system, out of this system of energy and information that we called the body mind and here's the important part it's not it, it's not caused by the brain by the way it, it's arises out of it's part of the system and the important point is that the mind what it does is it, it focuses it controls the flow of information and energy over time so when well, I heard those words it was like the mind controls the flow of information and mm -hmm. energy right. over time. I could, could barely like sit in my seat. I was so excited. Well, there's this huge distinction that you're making, Dan Siegel's making, of what the difference is between the brain and the central nervous system right. and the mind itself. Right. So what, what Dan talks about, there, there's more to the definition. He goes on to say that the thing, this thing we call the mind is both embodied meaning it's in the body, which includes the brain and the mm -hmm. nervous system, including, and the rest of the body, which he would include. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interpersonal, so it's between us. It even goes so far as to say there are wider systems, cultural systems, that affect the flow of information and energy. And so to the point where even later on we can talk about how changing the way you you uh, think about things, if you do it consistently enough, it literally changes the brain. It literally sculpts the brain. So this is the phrase that the mind sculpts the brain. Is there a cause-effect relationship that's being suggested there? No, he's, no, it's not. That's the whole point. It's not cause-effect. It is a circular, it's a circular function that they, they, they co-arise and they influence each other. So again, the point that he says is that the mind controls the flow of information over time. It, it comes out of the flow of information and energy, so it loops back on itself. So the brain can change itself. The mind can change the brain. The brain can change the mind. It is a circular function, and they each and the flow can go either way. Does that have something to do with neurogenesis and neuroplasticity? Right, totally. Neuroplasticity. Part of the point of neuroplasticity is if you. Um, at least for psychotherapists, is that if you nerves that fire together, wire together, heads rule. Mm -hmm. So if I continually engage in a behavior over and over and over, whether it's actual physical behavior or thinking behavior, if I do that en enough times, I will literally begin to change how the nerves, neurons are connected. I will literally sculpt the structure of the brain, which then shifts the flow of that which I might we might refer to as thinking. So if I change my thinking, I change my brain. If I change my brain, I change my thinking. And, and so over time. So what are the implications of, of this kind of neuroscience for someone who's using energy psychology methods? Right. And how is that different than cognitive behavioral or rational <coughs> behavioral therapies? Well, so the, the beautiful part is, on one hand, it's not different at all because all therapies, anything that has the chance of changing behavior, part of what it's doing is it's changing the flow 
of information and energy. So the, mm -hmm. you have to kind of go back a step. So if the mind controls the flow of information and energy, right? Then the next question is, well, what's a problem? Mm -hmm. what, so a problem, and Daniel's going to talk about there's different ways of, there's a functional flow and a dysfunctional flow. Mm -hmm. So dysfunctional flow tends to be either chaotic or rigid. So anything that leads to more dysfunction, we tend to cause we call psychopathology or problem, and the things that help create more integration or more flow, less chaos, less rigidity, we tend to call uh, therapeutic. So anything that moves toward that, that um, toward the middle, toward the integration, is generally therapeutic, cognitive behavior therapy, hypnosis, energy psychology, and so on. The thing that's interesting about energy psychology, it's the only... Um, system of psychotherapy, if you are, or psychotherapeutic uh, uh, system that explicitly uses the energy system of the body. Every, you know, we, we share things with other things like talking, focusing, and attention, but, you know, but we're the only ones that actually attempt to activate you know, the purported energy systems such as meridians. Chakras and so on. I'm interested more in how, at least that you're theorizing, that energy psychology and energy psychotherapies might be directly affecting the, the brain, central nervous system, yeah. and the mind. For instance, the polyvagal theory. Okay, so, well, let me, let's back up a minute. Mm -hmm. um, the more common understanding uh, theory about why energy psychology works is uh, that it uh, deactivates uh, amygdala activation. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is evidence that suggests that if you stimulate meridian points, it down-regulates the, the amygdala, mm -hmm. thereby reducing the alarm, thereby helping resolve traumatic reactions. And that's probably accurate. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that also interests me is polyvagal theory. Um, mm -hmm. 